If you are maybe thinking about becoming a data analyst or maybe you've just got a data analyst job and you are looking on things to improve, I think this video is really going to help you. I'm going to share the three main skills that I think you need in order to be a very good data analyst, as well as two bonus skills that I think separate the good from the great. Stay tuned for those tips. Obviously, we're going to talk about them. But firstly, what makes me qualified to talk about this? While I've been a data analyst for the last three years, I think in that time I've had three to four analytical roles in a variety of functions. Before that, I was studying mathematics, operational research and statistics, and I got a first class degree from that, and then I went into this field of data analysts. I am by no means an expert, however, I think I have picked up on the skills that you need to be really good at this job. If some of the things that I'm saying ring true, then you're probably on the right track. You're probably gonna enjoy being a data analyst and all of the things that it entails. The final thing before we get into this video is I apologize for the gym way. I've just come from the gym and I had these thoughts in the gym, so I thought I would just dash straight back and record this for you. <laughs> right, the first skill that you need, and it's probably the most obvious one, but you need to be very good technically. You need to be able to use certain pieces of software and be proficient in a variety of different tools. Depending on the business or the company that you work for, you will be using a variety of software for kind of the two aspects of data analysis. The data cleansing stage where you get the data in the right shape, you clean it properly, you import it, blah, 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 blah. And then the second stage of the process, which is where you actually put that data into visualizations such as dashboards, KPI charts, etc. And this is what the end customer and stakeholders see. To do both of these steps, you'll need to use a variety of different software, but you also need to be willing to learn these things because in my experience, there's never a day where someone just sits you down and handholds every single thing you do. You have to be good at Googling your problems and kind of working things out for yourself. In my old job, I used to use Alteryx for data cleansing and joins and Tableau for data visualizations. Naturally, in any analyst job, you will also be using a lot of Excel. That just kind of goes without saying. For anything statistical, we use a software called R, and we used R Studio as the interface for that. However, now I've joined a brand new organization, I find myself using Python, Power BI for data visualizations, as well as the majority of my time is spent in SQL. So it can very much change depending on the job you go into. However, the good thing for us as data analysts is that if you've done one thing in a lot of these tools, you can kind of do it in all of them. They just have their quirks. For instance, if you've built something in Tableau, you can probably bet that you can build the same thing in Power BI. Actually, that's not always the case, but if you're a data analyst, you understand that. I've lost track of the amount of times I've gone into Power BI to do something that is very simple in Tableau, and it turns out that it was requested in Power BI on a message board years ago and still hasn't been updated. You need to become good and proficient at these tools in order to answer data requests and build visualizations quickly, and you also need to be willing to put in the time to learn particularly for programming language such as Python and R, because in my experience, these require a lot more initial investment of time. Once you are comfortable and skilled at using these tools, then comes the fun part of being able to manipulate the data into a fashion that you can put into Power BI and Tableau in order to present your visualizations. This is a skill in itself and being able to think, right, I need to have the columns tall and not wide or vice versa in order for the chart to look like this. If you don't know what I'm saying, it will come over time, I promise you. It does just take a lot of time and a lot of practice. I think if I was starting out again in this field, I would probably just begin learning Python. I think Python is such a versatile tool and the honest answer is if you learn Python and you learn it well and you learn libraries like Pandas, NumPy, you're going to find picking up other software very simple in comparison. Moving on to the second skill that I think you really need to enjoy to be a good data analyst is problem solving. I was having a conversation with a colleague in work the other day and we were saying that 90% of our time is fixing things. And we were joking, but we weren't really because as a data analyst, you'll soon realize that everything is always broken. 
there's always a server that goes down. There's always a dashboard that you refresh and it just doesn't refresh because the data format has changed. And then you have to go in and rebuild all the code. I find that 80% of my time is spent on 20% of the problem. This is Pareto's law, I'm sure you've all heard of it. But essentially, I find that the first 80% of a project, a request, a piece of work comes fairly naturally within you know a few hours, maybe a few days. And then the vast majority of my time is spent on that final 20 20% fixing something which is broken, getting something into the right format which isn't quite working and you need to really really enjoy this process. For instance for myself the other day I was looking through a SQL stored procedure and it was like five or six hundred lines of loads of nested queries and joins and I finally found that the problem was that there was a date add function which had a missing Y so instead of subtracting one whole year it was subtracting a day and it was causing the entire query to essentially be redundant and i was like yes i found it i found it and you have to kind of be that sad <laughs> you kind of have to enjoy just like finally finding the bug in the code and then you just get a buzz from it so the skill that you really, really need to be a data analyst is to be good at problem solving and you need to enjoy it. It's no good being extremely technical and building these amazing fancy dashboards and doing all this data wrangling if you cannot communicate your results to a non-technical audience. Ultimately, half of your role is being able to communicate your analysis with people who aren't as techy as you. In my experience and something that I try to do and pride myself on is if you have an analyst who's not only technically brilliant, but is a strong communicator and can storytell with data and give useful insights to stakeholders, that's kind of like the golden ticket. That's like such a good combination and it's quite rare to find. So try and improve your communication skills, practice with a non-technical audience because that will serve you extremely well. Don't just focus on the technical side and learning the software. Obviously, all of that is really, really important and ultimately that's what allows you to do your job. But particularly if you're in more of a stakeholder engagement type analyst role, it's really important that you can communicate results with people. So don't neglect communication. It is very, very important. The other side of communication that I've actually just come across starting a job remotely over the last few months is being able to understand and explain problems that I'm having simply. And this becomes very apparent when you're communicating virtually over Teams. You need to be able to explain simply, right, I'm having this problem with the code. I've tried doing this, this hasn't worked. Can you help me? Because there's no point ringing someone and saying, I have no idea what I'm doing. Try this, try that, and being all muddled with your communication because then it's very difficult for that person to help you. So being able to communicate with your fellow team members in a clear fashion is also extremely, extremely important. At the start of this video, I said I was going to share two bonus tips with you. And this is because I don't think these are essential, but I think if you have both of these skills, you'll be a great data analyst. So the first one is good design skills. Being able to craft a dashboard or a report in Power BI that is aesthetic and pleasing to the eye is just a very, very good skill to have. If if you can communicate data in an aesthetic way where people understand, build intuitive products and dashboards and reports. I think it's just like a nice little bonus being able to present your work in a nice way. Maybe this is just me, but I really, really appreciate that as an analyst. And I can tell when someone's gone through a lot of effort to make the page look effortless. Like I've seen some dashboards and products in the past and you look at them and the formatting's a mess and the font isn't consistent. By having a good eye for design, I think Think that really really separates you i've had a lot of good feedback on some of the things i've built over the years just because i abide by some basic design principles if you are currently a data analyst i would recommend just doing some design courses on youtube watch some tutorials it's very simple to get a good eye for what kind of fonts you should use and the colors which go well together. It doesn't take very long at all, but it can really go a long way. And if you've done the headache of prepping the data and doing the wrangling and joining everything together, then surely you should be trying to present that data in the best way you possibly can. Okay, the second bonus is some statistical knowledge. Now I have a maths and statistics background. I spent three to four years studying this stuff. So I'm quite well versed in statistics and it really goes a long way being able to 
perform some tests under the right assumptions, knowing when to use certain things. So that you can say to people, oh yeah, this result was statistically significant. Explaining your hypothesis testing and stuff like that, it really goes a long way if you can back up your analysis with statistics. I put it as a bonus because I don't think many data analyst jobs require that. They might require some descriptive statistics such as means and medians and stuff like that, but they never really require you to be a statistician. However, if you do have that under your belt or in your toolbox, I think it goes a really long way and it also opens up possibilities to maybe work on data science projects or more modeling and forecasting projects. I don't think you need to be a statistician, but I think it's good to have some statistical knowledge. That is why I put it as a bonus. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first time I've talked about the skills that go with being a data analyst and what my job actually entails. If you enjoyed this video and you would like more videos about being a data analyst, I would like to make some more. So please let me know down in the comments, like the video if you enjoyed and thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.